there's a spider living in my window. It's like making its web. I can see it doing the, the thing, which in a way should be fascinating, except I'm in, I'm terrified it's gonna come into my apartment. God, I hate spiders. Welcome to Amber Unabridged. Today I am starting a series idea, like a little mini series idea that I've had for a while that I've been playing with. I have approximately 8,000 short story collections. I love short stories. And I feel that um, I never pick up any of my short story collections because I'm not always in the mood for multiple stories at a time. And I think also that Goodreads tends to um, encourage people to finish an entire book in a go. And I don't always want to read all of the stories in a book. Sometimes I just want to read a story. So I had this idea to sort of reward myself for reading my short stories, which is to sort of just kind of celebrate each story individually with this little mini series I'm going to call Short Story Sunday. Who doesn't love alliteration? So I decided that I was going to start. We're, we're gonna do this, we're gonna have a good time. Knowing me, it probably won't be every Sunday, but I'm gonna try to shoot for that if I can. I was texting a friend of mine and I was like, do I justify the short story collection that I just bought today by starting there or do I start with a favorite? And he said, start with a favorite. So that's what I'm doing, I'm starting with a favorite. I am going to be talking about, you can probably tell from the title, Urashima the Fisher Boy, or uh, it's sometimes referred to as uh, Urashima Taro. I will say this video will contain spoilers for the story. This is a, an incredibly old story. I just reread it now in Myths and Legends of Japan, edited by F. Hadland Davis. Don't know who that is, but apparently they edited this collection from Dover Publications. I've had this book for years, and I actually first encountered this story in another Japanese folktale collection that I read on my Nook when I got it back in 2010. So it's it's been a while but of that entire collection this is the story that um that stuck with me the most it's nine years later and I still remember it it just really resonated with me and I really enjoy it this is a very short story I think in here it's only about four pages long it's about Urashima he's a fisher boy in a coastal fishing town in Japan and he is fishing one day and he catches a tortoise. And he'd heard the legends that tortoises can live for hundreds of years or thousands of years. And he's like, you know, it's not up to me to kill this tortoise now if they can live that long, so I'm gonna let it go. He lets it go and he continues fishing. He doesn't catch anything. And then he starts hearing his name being shouted. It's the tortoise. It's just like, hey, you know, I really appreciate you not killing me. As a reward, I'm going to take you to the Sea King's Palace, or the Palace of the Dragon King. So Urashima gets on this tortoise's back, and he's taken through the ocean to this mystical place that he'd only ever heard of in legend. I thought about this nine years ago, and I thought about it again. It's a tortoise. Why is it in the ocean? <laughs> Details. Uh <laughs> um, so he, he gets there, and... It's this beautiful, beautiful place that can exist with all four seasons, with every season at once. So you, it's it's summer, it's spring, it's fall, it's winter. And I just, it, I love that imagery. It sounds like a gorgeous place to go. And he's there and the Dragon King's daughter, the princess Oto or Otohime. Hime means princess in Japanese. So Otohime, comes out and she's like, hey, actually, I was the tortoise and I was just testing you to see if you had a good heart. So you do, and as a reward, let's get married. And he's like, yeah, cool, sure. So they get married and he spends three days there and he's just having a great time. He's like, oh, 
snap, like I've got parents way up back home and I would like to see them and stuff. And so uh, Otohime gives him this box as a wedding gift and, you know, as a parting gift or what have you. And she says, don't open it. You cannot open this box. Don't open this box. It's called the box of the jewel hand. And so he's like, all right, cool. So she takes him back and he's there and he's like, I can't like, you know, there, where's my hut? I don't know. All I see is the stream that was always here. But he asks a passerby, you know, what's what's going on? And they're like, oh, yeah, this guy, Urashima, he left ages ago, like 300 years ago. He just disappeared in the sea and nobody heard from him again. He realizes after talking to the stranger that one day in the sea palace, in the palace of the sea king, is equivalent to 100 years on earth. So he spent three days, and so 300 years have passed since he left his hometown, since he left his village. Urashima realizes that his family, his parents, his siblings, their grandchildren, they all died, they're all gone, and he's like, well, what's this? And he's like, oh, well, I guess I'll just go back to the palace of the Dragon King, the palace of the Sea King. And he doesn't really know how to do that, so he thinks, oh, right, this box that my wife gave me, Maybe that has the answer for how to get back. He opens this box and in it are all of the years that he has not spent on Earth. And he opens the box and he ages 300 years and he dies right there on the beach. And that's the story. <laughs> this story stuck with me for the last nine years. I This is the first time I've read it again, though I did hear it talked about on a podcast that I listened to about myths and legends. Uh, and he talked about Urashima Taro, and I was like, I know that story, I know it, it's one of my favorites. And it's it's still, it's still just kind of fun in a, you know, super depressing Japanese kind of way. And I just love it, it's so great. And I'm really happy that I returned to it. If you like short stories, or if you've read this story, or if you have another favorite short story that this reminds you of, if you say Rip Van Winkle, we can't be friends anymore, then please comment down below and let me know what you think. If you are also being tormented by a spider in your window, then also let me know and also maybe come to my apartment and kill it for me because I'd really appreciate that. So, yes. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for being here. Bye!